you're looking at the heart of the most fundamental field in the universe. The only true field actually is magnetism. Everything else is a field modality or an anti-field. Anti-field towards counter space, which would be an erasure. Erasure of space. Magnetism is, by definition, space and magnitude. Space is not a thing in and of itself. Space has no properties. Which is exactly what Nikola Tesla said, by the way. Let's take a look at the cylinder magnet. There we go. This is the first ever in the world 4K video of a supercell. You see this spirograph-like pattern here? Now, the magnet is exactly the same shape. Well, it's flat, but it's still a torus. Magnet is the same shape as the magnetic field. Remember, there's nothing feeding this. This is just, if you were to look at this at a, a deep angle, you'd actually see about four inches of holographic depth. Magnetoholography. Look. You see the uh, spirograph right here? In the center, we actually have a hyperboloid formation. Correct? Hyperboloid. What's the inverse of the hyperboloid? Hourglass -like shape patterns, hyperboloid. We have the torus. The negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid. The negative image of a torus or a hyperboloid is a torus. The negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid. The negative image of a hyperboloid is a torus. That's the conjugate nature of the universe. You're seeing it right here. Let's grab another magnet. What should we grab? Let's actually stick this underneath. Let me actually lift this up and scoot it underneath a little bit. And then bring it down. Here we go. Now I'm just going to move the supercell around. You see if I leave it one place for a second? Because it's so sensitive, it'll leave a burn. It's only a temporary burn, but it'll leave a burn in the... Uh... Do you know that there's less... Uh, even on this uh, giant supercell, there's less than two drops of ferrofluid. Of course, the other solution is something else, but we only have three drops of fluid. And a lot of that actually squished out in the formation of this, so we actually got about two drops of fluid covering this gigantic cell here. Let's go with another magnet. Let's go with a weird one that I made using... Ah, uh, that wants to jump always on me. It likes to jump. Hold on, here we go. It likes to jump on me. Because I'm uh, putting uh, tiny magnets inside of a uh, ring magnet. See, I have little two inch, two, two millimeter cubes inside here. What happens when you think I stick a polarizing filter over top of this? Huh? and twist the polarizing filter. I have to save that for another video, won't we? Okay. The stronger the magnet, the better the image will appear. I recommend N52 rare earth magnets, which have the highest rating. Different magnets or combination of magnets produce a wide variety of patterns, so by all means, experiment. And that's it a working ferrocell in under an hour. The only thing left to do is figure out how ferrocells work, which is what follows, but isn't really necessary if all that's needed is a visual representation of magnetic fields in action. Isn't that cool? Hey folks, welcome to another video from A Plain Truth For You. This is a fun one for me. I wanna try and explain how magnets work how the toroidal fields, the three dimension, the four dimension are all intertwined and that's why biomagnetic healing works through magnetic principles. We all know that the earth has its own magnetism, but did you know there's other dimensions of magnetism? We have the law of attraction. Our heart beats based on a, a repulsion and expansion and retraction. It's a bump bump, it's a beat. And so does magnetism have a beat, but it's in 
a dimensional form that we very rarely discuss. They talk about the Earth's magnetic field and the North Pole North magnetic field, but they're only talking two dimensions. They're only talking in a circular way where you just saw in the video that was two dimensions, but you can envision and we'll see a little bit more about how it's three dimensional. But they always show us just the two dimensions. You remember the spider looking Van Ellen belts where all of a sudden it becomes from a from we're enclosed in a vacuum of hit the vacuum of space. Yet there's no wall that all of a sudden becomes uh, there, there's no friction, no resistance. And then they show us this image as well of the Earth going around to the sun and has it. The Earth has its magnetic field, but the sun's corona. There we go. Corona has its magnetic field as well. Well, they're kind of trying to tell us something, but they're doing it in upside down, backwards ways. Take a look at this image. Look at where the north and south poles are on the magnets. And they got the south magnet, the pushing magnet at the top at the north pole. Does that make any sense where the north magnet is down south? They're flipping it. But it's really, in reality, it promotes the whole flat earth conversation because in reality, we're in a multidimensional world and we're talking about subtle energy. Energy is the key to the conversation about magnetricity, super light. And the beauty of biomag healing is the energy is universal. This is from uh, Dr. Molesky who talked about that the super light speed of a magnet uh, from, emitted from a black hole and travels towards the, the source is 10 billion times faster than the speed of light. The speed of light is 186,000 miles a second, and it's 10 billion times faster. And then we have these beautiful words that all begin with M-A-G, like magnetic, magi, magnify, magical, magnificent, magna, mad, magnanimous, Magdalena, the feminine divine, magnitude, magnolias, magenta, all of these, or image, even has the word mag in the center of it. This is not by coincidence. And are you aware that our brains are filled with billions and billions of tiny bits of magnetite? <clears throat> this is how this works. We have proof of a magnetic antennas in the brain. It shows that magnetite crystals are some of them are very weak signals, but we react to them. Magnet fields react over one million times more sensitive to external magnet field than other biological matters. This means that external magnet fields directly influence the brain that can, can affect and heal and can also disturb many functions of our metabolism. But biomagnetic energy and every culture and every medical uh, tradition before here, healing was accomplished by moving energy. So let's get into the three dimensions of how this works, of the magnets being centrifugal, centripetal, circular, radiate, radiative, radiative, and uh, uh, spatial. It's all working in different dimensions, as you saw and you'll see in the future video I got coming up here. And then we have this movie Thrive with Procter Gamble showing the toroidal field and the flat earth as well in the movie called Thrive that he put out. And then we also know that our heart is 100,000 times stronger electrically or magnet, magnetricity, 5,000 times more magnets than the brain. And we also feel an attraction. It's the attraction principle. We also have our auras. There's over nine different aura fields that biofield tuning taps into. And then we have how the earth works with its biofield and its earth dome and its electrolysis salt water that creeps the alternating current going. It's all based on magnetism. It's all based on magnetricity. And we are magnetic beings. We don't talk about we're magnetic beings. We talk about the electrical universe, yada, yada. No, it's magnetism, folks. Magnetricity is much greater. So here's, um, you, you notice the North and South Pole here. Here's a video showing how this polarity works in the energy fields, the subtle energy fields that you can make for yourself. I'll put this in the show notes. And here this guy did that by putting magnets encased in this flask here and then adding some iron fillings inside of it. And then he shakes it up and then he puts some magnets inside the iron fillings and voila. Now, what does they say the Earth's core is made of? Iron. What is magnets attracted to? Iron. Now, there's two types of magnets. There's diamagnetism and paramagnetism, which I'm going to get into in a little bit. But here you see the two different types. But again, this is only pretty much on two-dimensional scales. Magnets work on three dimensions, even four dimensions when you bring up your intention 
and subtle energy healing and remote healing. But isn't that beautiful how magnets can react and make these elegant, beautiful fields that we can actually see and we can actually prove exists? It's not like it's, it's woo-woo science, like how does a cell phone get you find your message or whatever. This is very provable and it's being shown right here on this video. So you can see here as another image taken that it looks like a Freemason sign there. But you can see the different principles of the energy fields that are reacting and acting in three dimensional forms. This is again, this is two dimensions, but just envision that this thing has three dimensions. And like I said, even four dimensions. And once we get into the flower and tree of life, you're going to see some amazing, amazing principles from just putting a magnet under some feral, so, flu, feral fluid. But let's get into paramagnetism and the difference between that and diamagnetism. Chart from your textbook showing how we can classify materials. Over here we have the nonlinear materials referred to as ferromagnetics. These are materials that are strongly attracted to a magnet. Examples are iron, nickel, cobalt. Other materials are referred to as non-magnetic, but they are actually affected by a magnetic field. It's just that the effect is very weak. There are the paramagnetics and the diamagnetics. So a paramagnetic material is weakly attracted to a magnet, uh, but the force of magnetic attraction is, is very weak and much smaller than the gravitational force, so it's not readily observed. An example would be like aluminum. Uh, diamagnetic materials are actually repelled by a magnet, by a magnetic field. And again, that is a very weak effect compared to the gravitational force, so that's why we don't readily ob observe it. You might not think of water as being magnetic, but it is, and so are graphite, aluminum, and glass. This is a new and different category of magnetism called either para or diamagnetism, and it's different from the magnetism that you're used to. You're, you're probably already familiar with ferromagnetism. Ferro means iron. An unmagnetized piece of iron or nickel or cobalt becomes a magnet in the presence of a magnetic field. The effect is strong and lasts even after the magnet is removed. Paramagnetism is a similar effect, except that it's much weaker and temporary. Aluminum is a good example of a paramagnet. And so is oxygen, which is attracted to magnets. Here, I have a few milliliters of liquid oxygen, which sticks to the magnet. I'll explain why later. Gadolinium oxide and cupric sulfate are good examples of paramagnetic substances. Cupric sulfate is a salt that can be picked up by a magnet. Diamagnetic materials are exactly the opposite of paramagnetic. They are always repulsed. They would rather die than be in a magnetic field. An important example of a diamagnetic material is graphite. This specially made pyrolytic graphite is repelled by a magnetic field. Don't be confused. This is not static electricity or eddy currents. Graphite is repelled by a magnet, always, both by the north and south end. One way to check whether an object is diamagnetic or paramagnetic is to see how it aligns itself in a magnetic field. Diamagnetic objects like glass will rotate to avoid magnets. Here, we see that the glass is diamagnetic because it twists to get to the weaker magnetic field. But aluminum rotates into the field, typical of a parallel paramagnet. On the periodic table, we see that aluminum has three valence electrons. But what about a diamagnet like water? Yes, the water molecule. It has all of its electrons paired. It will not be magnetized. In fact, water is repelled by a magnetic field. The electrons come to lower energy as they are moved away from the magnet. In conclusion, when something is a paramagnet or a diamagnet, it tells you what its electrons are doing. In the case of a paramagnet, it has at least one unpaired electron. In the case of a diamagnet, it has mostly paired electrons.
So diamagnetism are the forces you're familiar with, with the north and south poles and the pushing and pulling actions of the magnets. But magnetite, paramagnetism is, the fine, is, is more of the finite, the subtle energies that is everywhere. And this is what these two actions and reactions create these toroidal fields, create these different energy fields that work in our bodies that help heal us. These are all fields of energy that go directly into our bodies to, to stimulate, to bring us back to homeostasis, to bring us back into balance, to bring us back into a, a, an alkaline state from a super acidic state. So here's a video of somebody using ferrofluid. fluid. You can do this at home, you can do this yourself, and using a sheet of glass and some ferrofluid, fluid, and then they put the magnets right on top of it. And as soon as, he, that's just a plate glass with some ferrofluid, fluid, which has some iron, uh, iron and some nickel in it and some cobalt. And you can do this yourself. You can do this at home. You can make your own magnetic fields. But as he moves this round ball around, you can see the different energy fields reacting. And so when we're working with people and we're doing magnetic placements, we're energetically uh, directing these type of, of, of dimensional energies to where we want to heal, to where the body is, at, is telling us it needs itself to bring it back into homeostasis, to bring it back into a, a, a balance where no, no pathogens, no viruses, no funguses, no parasites, uh, no bacteria can live. So here you see the different dimensions of the squares, of the rounds, of the, um, of the circles that create different dimensional fields. And the fields we work with um, in, in the biomagnetic healing uh, is using the rare earth magnets N52 neodymiums. And those are the ones that are the most powerful to get the most effect. But here you can see a ring magnet with others around the outside. And watch this thing just start to click and spin. This is energy being created. This is what's called piezoelectronics. This is what they use in engine turbines to run jet planes, not fuel. They use piezoelectronics in the jet engines. This creates energy. This isn't just an, an energy user, it's an energy creator. And if you wanna get into a thing called the Earth Engine, Google Inductance Energy Inc. and you can see they've got magnetic engines that can run four to five houses without needing electricity. This is the future of all. This is what they're talking about, the pole shift. So let's look at a few more of the different examples of paramagnetism and diamagnetism in action. It's tempting to assume that the lines we see are following the magnetic lines of force. But if we overlay the ferrous cell with the actual magnetic field lines, we can see that while the poles are close, as we move around to the sides, not only don't the ferrous cell lines line up with the field lines, they're actually perpendicular to them. Clearly, something more complicated is going on. But when I searched the internet and YouTube for an explanation, I couldn't find any that made sense. A few websites tried explaining it, but the more I studied what they were saying, the less sense they made. Now, I have master's degrees in mechanical engineering and plasma physics, so while I may not be the sharpest stick in the bundle, I can usually stumble my way into a qualitative understanding for most complicated explanations. But these ended up reading more like technical jargon designed to sound impressive more than actually explain something. But before beginning, the large number of intersecting lines created by the 39 lights that power the ferrocell make it difficult to see what's happening. So let's switch to a unit with only one light. Just for fun, I used a blue LED. We can now see that each light in the ferrocell produces three lights, one out of the pole and two more projecting perpendicular to the sides of the magnet. As we move to the left, the pole ray bends to the left. The left perpendicular ray bulges up and the right one moves down. The opposite happens when we move to the right. Any theory that claims to explain how a ferrous cell works has to be able to account for both the three rays and how they move. This image shows the three rays and how they relate to the magnet's field. Unfortunately, what I believe is going on is too complicated for this two-dimensional representation. So, get ready to go 3D. And here we are. What this image tries to show is that magnetic fields don't surround magnets in lines, but in a continuous field, depicted here as a series of cones that emanate from the North Pole, expand like the bell of a trumpet, and then fold backward as they converge towards the South Pole. 
the field surrounds the magnet in three-dimensional curved surfaces shaped a little like an egg. Then I'll continue to research how ferrocells work, and if I find a better explanation, I'll post a follow-up video about it. Ferrocells are interesting and great science projects, so if you're planning to build one, I hope you found this video helpful. But now we have four ball magnets. Why am I not seeing any field right here? Think about it. Remember a magnet is only defined by field coherency, correct? Remember that the magnetic fields are feeding themselves. Right now I basically have a miniature Hallback array where each magnetic field is feeding directly into the other. So I could take these same four, remember magnetic field geometry, so I can take these same four magnetic balls and take them apart and put them in a straight line. Okay, so where they're not feeding each other, one goes into two, goes into three, goes into four, and number four goes back into one again, right? So now, they're just aligning themselves with the Earth's magnetic field. So now, those are the same four magnetic balls, but they're spread out. You've never seen that in a video before. Eh. Did I explain that clearly? Field incommensurability. Field incommensurability. That's why it doesn't want to turn. It wants to slip on this super uh, slick glass plate and go, I don't want to go that way. I want to go the way the Earth's magnetic polarity is telling me to point. I don't want to go the way you want me to point. So, remember the magnetic field is a torus. A ring magnet is a torus by definition, so the actual shape of a ring magnet is the exact same shape as the magnetic field. But if we break that, then we're actually breaking the holographic incommensurability of the field. It's still a toroid. It doesn't matter whether it's actually shaped like the toroid or not. So now, since we have this missing section over here, the magnetic field is going, wait! It seeks its own pressure mediation. If you actually see this at a low angle, and now you're thinking, why don't you point the damn camera at a low angle? Well, the reason I don't is because if I did that, you'd actually see all these LEDs and they blind you instead of seeing the field. That's why you have to own one of these instead of looking at it through a camera video. How about that? Now, you see this? Now this is a broken ring magnet. What do you think the ring magnet looks like? Let me scoot this out of the way and grab the ring magnet. Where you at, ring baby? Here we are. Here we are. Let's just slowly scoot them out onto the ice. Let's array broken beauty. Now, recognize the field pattern. It looks like an S, right? Pretty much. Let's arrange broken beauty into a, a different pattern. Magnetism finds its own pressure. Now we have a completely different formation. Magnetism finds its own pressure. Now we have a completely different formation. You're looking at the heart of the most fundamental field in the universe. The only true field actually is magnetism. Everything else is a field modality or an anti-field. Anti-field towards counter space, which would be an erasure erasure of space. Magnetism is, by definition, space and magnitude. Space is not a thing in and of itself. Space has no properties. Which is exactly what Nikola Tesla said, by the way. Let's take a look at this cylinder magnet. Let's array broken beauty. Now, recognize the field pattern. It looks like an S, right? Pretty much. Let's arrange broken beauty into a, a different pattern. Let's say... God, she's really tough, too. Tough. Why am I calling a magnet a she? I need to get out of the house more, don't I? <laughs> there we go. Now we got a different... Magnetism finds its own pressure. Now we have a completely different formation. You're looking at the heart of the most fundamental field in the universe. The only true field actually is magnetism. Everything else is a field modality or an anti-field. Anti-field towards counter space, which would be an erasure. 
erasure of space. Magnetism is, by definition, space and magnitude. Space is not a thing in and of itself. Space has no properties, which is exactly what Nikola Tesla said, by the way. Let's take a look at this cylinder magnet. Pretty trippy, huh? So this is what we use in biomagnetic healing. We work with the polarities, polarity therapy. I don't like the word therapy, but what again we're doing is we're bringing the body back into homeostasis so the sicknesses cannot dwell, the pathogens cannot dwell, and we use magnets in their energy fields to do that. Uh, Dr. Randolph Stone put out a great book, Polarity Therapy, and he shows where the energy flows in our bodies between positive and negative. And Dr. Goys and now Dr. Garcia have taken it to a whole nother level to give us the placements we need to bring best back into having healthy cells. And you can see when healthy cells are in balance, the polarities are in balance. It's all about getting us back into balance. And this also has to do with water. Once we treat the water, we get treated water, structured water, we bring it back, water back into balance. And since 70% of our bodies are water and 50% of our blood is water, it makes total sense that we should be bringing our bodies back into homeostasis with water as well. This is why structured water is so important as well to bring, bring a part of your healing protocol to bring you back into optimal health. And what this creates, the Victor Schauberger, the water wizard showed, was that structured water is part of a, a universal energy. And so when you use this polarities and you use them in a certain way, you create this troidal field, this field of implosion. Life is created with implosion not explosion. And so when you place the magnets, red, red, it pushes, pushes, black, black, it pulls, pulls, red, black, it turns it, and red, red, it turbos the turn to create the structured water. So we sell these water sleeves. If you're interested, contact me, um, and you can get these and put them right on your faucet, and your water becomes structured water way. All right, that's all I got, and enjoy. Here's one more for your visual pleasure of magnetricity in action. To create this magnificent display of magnets, Joey uses time lapse, taking one picture every second. It only probably took 10 minutes for it to fully be engulfed, and it pretty much looks like he's just going and going ah, like that, and it worked out pretty good. We probably should have put some sound effects of him like screaming or something. How does this peculiar putty do this? Joey has made a video using a very strong magnet called neodymium, like this one, and also magnetic putty like this. And when you put them together, the magic happens. The key to the putty's really creepy behavior is that it contains loads of particles of iron oxide or magnetite. Each speck of iron oxide contains many negatively charged electrons. Now each electron has its own magnetic field, which means they're like tiny bar magnets. In general, they're arranged at random so there's no overall magnetic field. As you bring a powerful magnet close to the putty, all these randomly aligned tiny bar magnets start to align itself with the magnetic field of the magnet. And this causes the putty to start moving forwards and start enveloping the magnet. To create this magnificent display of magnets, Joey uses time lapse, taking one picture every second. It only probably took 10 minutes for it to fully be engulfed, and it pretty much looks like he's just going and going ah, like that, and it worked out pretty good. We probably should have put some sound effects of him like screaming or something. How does this peculiar putty do this? Joey has made a video using a very strong magnet called neodymium, like this one, and also magnetic putty like this. And when you put them together, the magic happens. The key to the putty's really creepy behavior is that it contains loads of particles of iron oxide or magnetite. Each speck of iron oxide contains many negatively charged electrons. Now each electron has its own magnetic field, which means they're like tiny bar magnets. In general, they're arranged at random, so there's no overall magnetic field. As you bring a powerful magnet close to the putty, all these randomly aligned tiny bar magnets start to align itself with the magnetic field of the magnet. And this causes the putty to start moving forwards and start enveloping the magnet.
this video, we'll encounter strong magnetic fields and messy stuff. Ferrofluid is attracted by a magnet, so much that it doesn't care about gravity and lifts up in these nice spikes, following the magnetic field lines. I have placed an extremely powerful 6x2 inch near dimmer magnet under the table to control the ferrofluid. Not just for the visuals, but also since I don't want to drop this by accident directly onto the magnet. The cleanup would be... I would rather clean up after an exploded whale. But for your viewing experience, I'll get it as close to the uncovered magnet as I dare. If I go too close, the magnet will lift up or pull the glass tray out of my hands, smashing the glass and... well, do not try this yourself. There is something that countless of you asked for on my previous video. Touch the spikes. This is not recommended since ferrofluid is a skin irritant. I will wash my finger right after the recording to avoid a skin rash. As you can tell, the spikes are very soft and stain a lot. The fluid has already run under and around my nail. Some of them have a thorn at the end. I have never seen this before. After tweaking the distance between the magnet and the fail fluid, I got this result. My guess is that this is a sign of how powerful this monster magnet really is. Its magnetic field is so strong that the magnetite in the fluid is stacked high enough to break through the surface tension of the carrier fluid. Petroleum in this case. This looks so cool. The monster magnet never disappoints me. Let's take a closer look at how these spikes are formed. Here I sprinkle iron filings near a magnet. As you can tell, the filings get magnetized and line up following the magnetic field lines. The magnetite particles in the field fluid react in the same way. But the iron filings here are like a powder and form random spikes with different thicknesses, heights and spacing in between. If we suspend the magnetic particles in a liquid instead of air, the surface tension of the liquid helps shape the spikes in a much more ordered manner. The surface tension wants to contract the liquid, making the surface area to volume ratio as small as possible. It can be shown by putting tight particles are attracted to and aligned with the magnetic field lines, making it look like solid spikes. That's why the spikes are very soft to the touch. They can't even hold a Lego piece at their tips. <laughs> 